Um, so thief is a game in which you really have no powers to fight particularly. And you have to look at the world entirely as patches of light and darkness, places that you, because he has a great power to hide, to uh, melt into the shadows, and you have to look at the game as a set of uh, uh, places of light and dark. In a game like Full Spectrum Warrior, which is a uh, game the army uses for training, uh, you, you have, to, you have to, to play this game, you can't lose any soldier. And uh, you have to go safely from cover to cover, so you look at the world entirely as places of cover, where you can get four people completely covered so they can't get hurt. Once you play this game for a while, like any game, you go out in the real world and you can just see it. You can start to sneak around the Northeastern campus and hide from your new president. Um, who used to be a, I, I say that with love because uh, you were president and I were linguists together at USC before he became the minister and went to the dark side. Um, if you play Chibi Robo game, I highly recommend that you are a four inch robot that has to clean the house. <laughs> and you have to get everywhere in the house to clean it. Now, look, think about it. How would you look at your house if you were only four inches tall? <laughs> and you have to solve those problems. By the way, this game is the one that uh, has been used. My mother told me she, this is the ultimate proof that games do not transfer to real life. Because my kid loves it, but he never cleans anything at home. Um, uh, so my point is, you know, this won't go backwards. Uh, here we go. Um, so that, well, the point I want to just make is absolutely typical of gaming, that you take something that looks like the real world and have to see through it to those leverage points for action and problem solving. Now, of course, wouldn't it be a good theory of learning? I mean, that, if you think about it, what does it mean to learn something like science? It doesn't learn to mean a bunch, to learn a bunch of facts, because those facts change today so fast to go out of date so fast, and there's so many of them, and they're so irrelevant by themselves. Actually, to learn physics, let's say, means to look at the real world and to see through it to where physical principles apply, to where there are leverage points to solve problems given the tools you have as physicists. If you're an anthropologist, it means you learn to look at the world in a very different way. Where in the world are there leverage points to use the tools of anthropology to solve problems? So in a real sense, this idea that learning is a way of vision, a way of looking at the world, and seeing through it to those points and affordances where I can solve problems, given my tools and goals, is actually pretty fundamental learning period. The entertainment industry has just managed to um, um, use it as a source of pleasure. All right, now let me turn to another specific example that, that, that it shows once again. I mean, so obviously what I'm saying is wouldn't it be great if we, instead of building military staff, we could build a science sim or an anthro sim or, and, and get people to be able to see the world and experience in ways that leverage the tools of those disciplines and those knowledge. Uh, uh, but however, even the entertainment industry, as its technology improves, are beginning to do what they do so well, and that is beat us at our own game. So here is a game called Portal. It comes free with uh, uh, the so-called orange box made by the makers of Half-Life, one of the most famous games ever made. And in Portal, you can't kill anybody. You actually have a portal gun. And the portal gun can make two portals, a blue one and an orange one. And anytime you make one portal like a blue one and you go through it, you'll come out the orange one. And that's the only tool you've got. And you have to use that tool to get out of many different environments because it turns out somebody's giving you a test. just like a school test. And you have to get out of very intricate environments without only that tool. And you come to realize, and they later realize they're trying to kill you. So it's just like school. And the, uh, uh, the, the fact that you come to realize that the portal tool operates by the laws of physics, it, it operates by certain principles of gravity. And for example, it operates, and you quickly realize this, by conservation of momentum. That the faster you go in one portal, the faster you come out, and therefore you have to realize how can I use the rules of gravity in this world to conserve momentum, to get out just at the right speed, to go just the right distance that I want to go. So the game is entirely based around physics. And uh, I'll just show you some pictures of the game. Uh, here's making one portal. Here's, here is a case where in order to fall, I've made the same portal over and over so that I can fall faster and come out the other portal faster because of the conservation momentum principle. 
Um, here is an area where there's a bunch of lasers and start to make portals to actually destroy the lasers to have them go. They have the lasers go in directions so they shoot each other uh, so they come out the right way. Here's just obstacles that you have to, you have to come through. Now, uh, if you think about this, what does this game do? Well, it's made physics fun. And by the way, this game is probably, I know from it, several game magazines are going to name it Game of the Year. So this is an entertainment game in which to do it, you have to get a very solid, tacit understanding of gravity, conservation of momentum, and other physics principles. And it's, and it's a great deal of fun. Now, how is the game designed? Well, the game is designed to uh, uh, give you a world that is simplified. It looks like a pretty picture world. It looks like a real world. But it's simplified to suggest to you how you ought to look for places that that are, give you uh, forces to use the portal. But it's doing exactly what I said before. It's trying to train you to see the world so that the physics tool you have and the physics <coughs> principles that you learn will apply. And then, if you know, what's interesting about this game is it simplifies the world enough to suggest to you how you should use the portals and how you should use these physical principles. You could then, if you had a portal down in the real world, which I would love to have, right? So I could open a portal in Arizona and open one here in the right there. <laughs> um, without playing. Uh, if you had a portal kind of the real world, you could go into the real world with all its complexity and your vision would be trained to be able to see the real world so that you could actually uh, uh, use these physics principles in the real world. And in fact, it's easy to do that with imagination. Once you play this game, I could see this room perfectly of how I would get over there using the law of conservation momentum and portal, something I would never have thought about before. But it trained my vision to look at this world to see how that principle would apply. Uh, now here's what the company <coughs> says about this game and why I brought up the game. I think this is a this is an encapsulation of what I would consider a 21st century theory of education in a world in which there's too much knowledge, in which uh, everyday people produce knowledge, not just experts, in which wisdom of crowds beat experts every time, and in which discipline can be fun. Right? And knowledge is produced across disciplines and in many sites outside of academic entrepreneurial across disciplines and even by 12-year-old kids. It says the game is designed to change the way players approach, manipulate, and surmise the possibilities in a given environment. And what I'm going to suggest to you is that 21st century education, we want innovation. And if we want people to be able to solve problems, it's got to stop being about disciplines and it's got to stop being about content. And it's got to be about giving people tools, new tools, that let them surmise new possibilities. If I give you a tool for physics, what are the new possibilities I can see in the world? If I give you a social activist tool to change the environment, what are the new possibilities? The, 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 this game gives you a tool that allows you to manipulate the environment, but more importantly, to survive new possibilities. And we're in a world in which we are wrecking our environment, wrecking our social systems, wrecking our economy, getting a generation of kids with tools to really sur survive new possibilities and produce no knowledge seems to me a now a trait for survival. Uh, so all this game did is that, you know, I want you to look at the world in a brand new way and see new possibilities in it. I'm going to give you this portal and I'm going to give you a simplified world to get you started, and uh, there you go. And to me, that's what school ought to be about. Uh, and, and we're in an age in which we, uh, our entertainment industry can develop new tools. Surely, with all of our digital technologies, new technologies, we can develop whole new tools to survive many new possibilities. Now, um, one of the problems with games, though, is that they give you a very deep, tacit understanding. So in Portal, you understand in an embodied way these physical principles, but you can't necessarily articulate them. Uh, you see, school tends to give you knowledge you can articulate in a text, but you can't do anything. Games give you knowledge that you can do stuff with it, you have tacit understanding, but you can't articulate it doesn't give you a lot of exercise and articulation. However, gamers do not view games as just the software, because they always create communities around games so that people can discuss them, debate them, change them, modify them, rebuild them. And those communities demand that you get articulate knowledge. So here is somebody who's made a wiki